Since the beginning of time, Minecrafters have been making XP farms. Usually it's a little hole in the ground where a spawner is hooked up to some sort of water elevator system. And indeed, that's what mine looks like right now. But I want to change all of that. You see, we're building a Minecraft world that feels lived in, a place full of fun builds and cool stories, a place we feel connected to. And that means transforming our tiny little skeleton spawner from a hole in the ground into a secret dungeon hidden away beneath my house. And of course, we've got plenty of other shenanigans to get up to this episode. Hi. I love doing that. I don't know why. Just the slow, like, move in till my face fills the screen. What's up? <laughs> hey, Gail. How's it going? Stand put in there. Good job. The first thing I want to do today is get another pet because I kind of want to get this house to the point where like there's just pets everywhere that we can say hi to. And so far we have a criminal mastermind axolotl, we have a kind of stuck up horse, and we have a cute little cat named Rufus who takes care of our fishing shack. But we don't have a dog, so hmm, I wonder if I have enough bones. Eh, maybe. We'll see. Oh, and rain at night. Wonderful. Oh, I forgot about all my copper. I should probably take that down. <laughs> because I like to be neat and tidy, I made sure to clean up all of the copper before I headed out to find a dog. Just cleaning copper, that's all I did. Seriously, we had so much of this stuff that we didn't use for a greenhouse. Oh well. Also, hi, how did you guys get in here? You're kind of inside my rose bush. You know what, you can stay there. You guys can also be my pets. Look at that, we already got two more pets and it's barely into the episode. Now, in my time deforesting this region over here, I've seen a couple of wolves in the area. I hope they're still there. Oh, I see one already. Let's go. Hey, bud. You gonna be easy to tame? Let's see how many bones it takes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. <laughs> Hi. We're gonna need a collar color for you because I don't want it to just be the plain red. I've been using a lot of yellow in this Let's Play, and I don't know why, because it's not exactly my favorite color, but it just goes well with the rest of my palette, I think. So, our first dog will be yellow. Hey, bud. All right, let's get back to the house. I can't wait for them to add the dog armor and for the update to come out, especially with the buffs they made to it recently. We're gonna have to take this guy along with us on all our adventures. Yeah, this is your new home. What do you think? I think he likes it. <laughs> Oh, we can take this off the project board. Boom. We've still got some things we gotta do on here soon. I'm thinking about actually trying to figure out how to do a live stream. That's been on my list of things to do recently. And finishing the path to Town Town because right now it goes to our fishing hut, but I wanna split it off and make it go all the way to Town Town out there. I think that's something that we could probably tackle on a stream. I just gotta figure out how to do that and when to do that, I guess. I'm thinking it would probably be on a weekend, maybe a Saturday, Saturday afternoon. How does that sound to you? I don't think he has an opinion. <laughs> Feel free to leave your name suggestions down in the comments below, and maybe we can find a good name for this dog that we just found. But for right now, it's on to the next thing. Guess what? In between recording, I got myself two new pieces of equipment. I got a new sword that I enchanted just to be our regular sword, and it has sharpness, unbreaking, sweeping edge, knockback, and looting three. I called it the great sword because it's a great sword. The only thing I'm not super sure about is knockback, but it's been okay for now, so I'm keeping it. We've also got another diamond sword, except it's not actually a sword, it's a bow. I don't know why I did that. I couldn't think of a name and it was right next to my sword, so yeah. It has power 5, punch 2, flame, and unbreaking. I think the only thing I'm really missing from it is infinity, so maybe we'll get that in on, on an enchanted book or something and put it on there. While we're around the house, I want to do something that should have been done a long time ago. I have these plants out front, but they're just resting on regular dirt. And I've picked up a couple of grass blocks through either my Silk Touch pick, I think, or I, we have a couple from Enderman as well. So I'm just going to replace one of these with the grass, and hopefully it spreads, and then this will be green up here. Very important stuff, I know. That's just been bugging me for so long. <laughs> but we need to start on our dungeon. And the big problem I'm running into right now is I'm not exactly sure where to put the entrance down into it. We have this thing, which I think I've actually blocked off because it comes right through the ceiling now. And also it takes forever to get down. Oh, yep, it's just up here in the ceiling. <laughs> and then we have the other way, which is I've been using more frequently. It's just up through this cave system here and you have to go along the edge of the ravine. See, it literally just goes along the side of this ravine. Not very safe at all. That's not an optimal entrance either. 
<sighs> so what are we gonna do? Oh, you're gonna, you're gonna... No, 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 no. Get off the cactus. Get off the cactus. What the... Why? Why would you do that? <laughs> Please. Okay. Stand up. Come this way. This is a dangerous spot for you to be. You can sit down right outside while we're doing this. Jeez, Louise. Anyway, I know Gil's lab is down here, but it's not really in use right now. So I'm wondering about building a staircase just down through the middle of here. I think I'm going to I'm gonna try that. I'm, I'm going to wing it. We'll see what happens. I got to work digging a hole deeper and deeper, not knowing that my bad sense of direction was about to mess up this whole project. Oh. Oh. Oh my gosh. I just realized something crazy. I'm completely turned around. This... Oh no. The... Oh. But... The... Ma I can't talk. My house is is the wrong direction compared to where I was digging. I thought this whole time, I thought I was going to come through this wall right behind me, right here. And ugh, I had this whole build kind of planned around the entrance coming out this way. But that's where the house is. It, it, it loops around and then does a 180 and then up there. That, that puts a damper on plans. Oh, man. Hmm. Shush. I'm, I'm trying to think here. <laughs> I decided I really wanted the entrance to be on this side of the wall. So, after a lot of trial and error and a lot of popping out in the wrong places, I finally got a connection hooked up to where I wanted it. Alright, listen up. Here's a bit of an update. I've been digging this thing. I've been getting the pattern down. I've been, I've been, you know, designing a little bit. Just a tiny bit. But uh, take a look at our pick. At the durability of that. 36 out of 1500. Oops, I just threw it down the stairs. Come back. So we need to do a repair real quick. I figured I would record this because I think it's like our first, I think it's our first repair of like a good tool, you know, that one that we've named. Oh, just started raining. It always starts raining. Also, how come I can't see the rain out of my stained glass? That's so weird. I think regular glass, you can see it, but it's just this, this stained glass for some reason. I love rain. Anyway, okay. I wanted to bring you guys along for this because, I don't know, I think it's like cool to have these tools that are like a part of our world. They're the ones that are building up our world block by block in our hands. And like I mentioned before, we're not using mending. So these tools will eventually get to the point where we can't repair them anymore. Oh, watch this. Pro strats right here. Did you see that? Pro strats. What was I saying? Oh yeah, no mending equals picks that we'll have to retire and make new picks. And I think that's kind of a cool way to show the history of our world as it grows bigger and bigger. So yeah, I, I, I made a lot of tunnels. There's just a bunch of random tunnels underground now where I was trying to make sure everything matched up. But this comes all the way down. And then I'm thinking on this landing, this goes to the skeleton spawner. I'll show you that in a second. But we could even have like different rooms like splitting off into different like dungeon corridors here. We could like... I don't know, keep something captive down here. Maybe we have like a potion brewing setup deep hidden underground so that no one knows about it. This is as far as I've gotten with the decorations because you come down this way and it's just bare tunnel. And you come down this way again and then you come down this way and look at this. We're through the wall that I wanted to come through. And here's the skeleton spawner. So we still have a ton to do. I'm going to get back to <laughs> just mining and mining these walls out. Okay, the stairs are finished, and I love how this looks. Ah, it's giving me all sorts of ideas of things that we could do under here in these, like, underground dungeon catacombs. We could even have rooms coming off of the 90 degree, or what is this? Yeah, 90 degree turns in the stairwells here. We could have things through these. I just, I love the atmosphere. It's like you're going deeper and deeper and deeper, and then, yeah, I haven't done anything in here. So, let's fix that. For this whole room, we're going to use deep slate slabs for the floor. There, I feel like that already makes such a huge difference in the atmosphere of the room. And you can see I've left this space in the middle for the skeletons. That's intentional. I can't just lift them. I can't talk today. That's intentional for the design. And the reason these are, you know, half off the floor instead of just down a full block is also intentional. Oh, I think they can see me from there. Yep, <laughs> they're, they're destroying themselves to try and get to me. <laughs> anyway, there is one piece of engineering that I have to move first, and that's this bubble column, because I think I should put something in my offhand. Yep, that's what brings them up and drops them down, and I need that to not be in this room whatsoever, which means first I'm going to have to turn off the spawner. So let's see if I can do this without dying. <laughs> okay, 
Actually, okay, that seemed a lot easier than I thought it would be. Let's just get torches everywhere to make sure it's not operational. And boom. Okay, perfect. We can leave this here now. And no more skeletons should spawn. Okay, wait a second. Drop the phone. Er, hold the phone. Drop everything. That's what I meant to say. We're getting dog variants? You're going to have some friends, buddy. This is so cool. I've always wondered why we've had so many types of cats in the game since the village update, but we've never had different dogs. I really like the fact that Minecraft is embracing different like variants of mobs recently, like even with the new skeleton that got added. I think we have a new goal for ourselves. I think we need to collect every type of cat and dog and maybe make a house from somewhere, make like a pet sanctuary. Oh, I love that. Don't worry, horse horse, I didn't forget about you. We will build you a ranch eventually, I promise. I can't wait to get so many Minecraft pets. <laughs> it's kind of uh, compensating right now because in real life, my wife and I really, really, really want a cat, but we're not allowed to have one in our current apartment complex. So I'm just, I'm compensating by getting a bunch of animals in Minecraft. That's right, good boy. Actually, let's feed you something. There you go. Anyway, sorry, I just had to rant about that for a second. Ignore my supplies here. I have moved the water column and done a little bit in this room. Oh my gosh, it's starting to look like a proper dungeon. I love this. I think the mix of the deep slate and the regular stone variants just looks so cool. I also, as you can see, I've mixed in like some stone bricks into the walls. Kind of like it, we like carved this place out of the earth. And we, I mean, we added support and structure where we needed it, but it's mainly just like a room that's carved out, you know? And of course, there's the center platter here where the skeletons are gonna get served up. And there's some hoppers under here. They're not connected to anything right now. Oops, I have those in there. But this is where our skeletons are gonna land. And I wanted to build up this like cage with you because I think it's such a cool design. I don't know. I'm actually not completely sure how I want to do this. So it's gonna have bars all the way around to keep the skeletons in, of course. Oh man, these things are hard to place. Okay, yeah, that's a good start. And now I want a block to go on top. Heck yeah, I think the walls look best because the, the other blocks are like, they stick out just a little bit further, you can see. And I think this just works better in the sense of like making a cage. I also added these little half slabs just to complete it so it looks like the cage isn't just like floating in midair. <laughs> but now we should be able to swipe at the skeletons when they drop in here and they shouldn't be able to hurt us, I don't think. Let's just craft up a couple more walls. And slap them down here to see what we think. Hmm, I just had an idea. What if we take out the corners here and replace them with these completely? Oops, not in that spot. Come on, there we go. The only problem now is that I can't access these hoppers, but eventually I'm gonna, ooh, I'll take that. Eventually I'm gonna, I think, hook them up to a storage chest on this side right here opposite the entrance. So I'm not too worried about that. Okay, scratch that. I came up with a design I liked a little bit better. The iron bars now go just on this top section and the walls go all the way around. I think it looks like a, a bigger cage. Yeah. Okay, let's get some decoration done in here because right now this room is way too plain. Let's start by adding some lanterns around the area. Now this will be interesting because these corner ones are kind of like, they're, they're an even number, but I think that's gonna look okay. We can kind of stagger the lanterns. Let's see, so if one goes like maybe right here now. Yeah, let me do this around the whole room. There we go, that's kind of neat. And the cool thing about this room is because it's on half slabs, we can have it kind of dimly lit and mobs won't spawn here, I don't think. I also want to add a door here for access to the area. Oh, wait, how do I do this? Yeah, there we go. Just so that we can get in here if we need to, to work on it. Now, I think some shelving on the sides of the perimeter would look kind of neat with some random doodads on it, like barrels that we can fill full of things and some bows that we've gotten from the skeletons we've defeated. I think maybe also, let's see, can I add a couple candles here? Yeah, that looks kind of neat. I'm doing the same kind of thing over on this side because I just, I think it's quite a vibe. Oh yeah, look at that. Another thing I want to do is add some of the armor we've collected onto some armor stands from down here and we can kind of fill these up as we get more armor from the skeletons. Yeah, that's kind of nice. This is also such a waste of chains, but I'm just kind of going around and adding some around the ceiling like we could have random things hanging from that. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, I like that a lot. 
Oh yeah, we could also add like some cobwebs up here in the corners. That is really nice and it really adds to the atmosphere. I'm leaving this wall blank because again, I think that's where like our, our bulk storage might be, but also we could probably just fill up these barrels with things as we, as we get them. So the dungeon is complete and in just a minute, we're gonna go turn it on, hopefully not die and hopefully see if it works and make sure skeletons don't just spill out everywhere. <laughs> I've also made a secret room in the dungeon catacombs that one of you guys is living in now. So we'll take a peek at that too. But right now it's time to check my mail and see what the question of the day is. Today's question comes from at not creed who asks, when will you beat the ender dragon? So I thought this would be a good time to kind of talk about my plans for the future of the series. And while we're chatting, I'll make my way up to the shrine so that we can go over the new members of the day. So yeah, we've really got to think about starting to progress towards the ender dragon at this point. Oh, I'm hitting my crane. Okay, this is hard to do. It's getting to the point in my world where I would love to have some shulker boxes just to take out to bigger projects. We could probably start the Wild West town at that point and we could start like the Arctic base that I had planned all these things we could do. So <laughs> yeah, it's time to get started on our quest to defeat the Ender Dragon. Now I want to be very clear because I've had a lot of people ask me this. No, this series will not end when we defeat the Ender Dragon. If anything, that is just the start. Remember this Let's Play is all about just building a world that's full of life and rich with history and builds everywhere. And we're not going to accomplish all that by the time we beat the Ender Dragon. So let's, let's say... Let's start preparing. I need to make some armor still. I keep putting it off. I also need to stock up on potions and weapons and stuff like that. Make the ultimate tool set. But let's say maybe by episode 20. I think another thing that I really wanted to do was not rush through the story part of the game too quickly because there's so many people that will do that the first episode is them like beating the ender dragon in the first five minutes and then moving on to whatever crazy insane challenge they want to put themselves through we're not about that here isn't that right mr chicken Oh, he's leaving. Okay. <laughs> but as is the goal of this series, I've been just enjoying the journey and just really taking things slow. And I've really been having fun. I really haven't felt the need to, you know, progress in the game any more than we are now. But I'm... <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Interrupting donkey. But... I think it is time to start getting ready for that fight because shulker boxes especially would be great to have. Anyway, let's go see the new members. Look at this, we're on this wall, and there's so many more names to add. We're definitely gonna have to build another shrine somewhere. <laughs> anyway, we've got Spruce Lee, thanks for being a villager. Spruce Lee. <laughs> Ari for being a member. Another nerd for being a villager. Welcome. <laughs> I'm also a nerd, so it's cool to see another one. Philip Anatra for being a member. Kyle Gupton Gupton? Gupton Music for being a member. Thank you. Oh, do you make music? I should go check that out. Shmi for being a villager. Batu for being a villager. Lego Khan for being a member. Love Legos. Manic Landamir for being a legend. Thank you. And Biggie, thank you for being a member. Okay, as the sun is setting, it's time to go finally check out the dungeon and that secret room I mentioned. Okay, here's the entrance. Just a pit in the ground. This is so cool though. It's like you're descending into another world. I really want to start making, oh, you can see the secret room in there. We'll go there in a second. I really want to start making like a maze of these tunnels. Oh, we could have like a cult of villagers down here. That could be you guys that are like doing secret things under my house. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. Anyway, uh, ignore my storage materials here. I've done a little bit more to the room in here. I added some archways and I think it just really brings the room together. Look at this. Oh man. But now of course it's time to turn this thing on and make sure the skeletons don't get stuck in the system or come out somehow. I don't know. Oh goodness. I already fell off already. Okay. This is going to be dangerous because they're going to start spawning as soon as I take these torches away. I really hope I don't get knocked off and have to go through the system. <laughs> oh, I didn't even put a torch on the back there. Okay. That makes this a little, little easier. And there's not one on that side either. I thought I put them on. I must have taken them off. I'm almost positive I put them on. That's weird. I'm pretty sure earlier in the episode, you can see me put one on this. Is our world haunted? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm like 100% positive there was torches on all sides. Let's just get torches everywhere to make sure it's not operational. And boom. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, that makes the job a little bit easier. Let's be careful here. And they spawn. Please. Okay. Don't knock me off. Take away everything. Close the door. And now we wait. 
there he is let's go it works it takes a little longer because the bubble column's way out that way now but oh my gosh and he should be one hit yes he's one hit still but we can always see <laughs> still can't talk but we can also use my looting sword to get some extra stuff and everything yes should go into this hopper here let's go that's awesome let's wait for a couple more to come down there we go there's a couple more <laughs> look at that and it's a three by three area so we should be able to pile up a ton before we hit him and grab all the xp let's go oh i'm so happy with this build look at this that's awesome oh my gosh okay okay let's go check out that secret room that i walked by before so <laughs> oh, he's in one of the prisons so i kind of made this like cages area like we could store some other people down here in cages like um we've got a skeleton in here don't ask me how i got him here and also i name tagged him you can't see his name in here maybe if i ever do a world download you'll be able to see what his name is but here is a villager who's i guess kind of the dungeon master <laughs> you're overseeing my prisoners that i've locked up oh yeah there's uh the remains of someone in here i guess they didn't fare too well in the dungeon and we've got some uh, tools here that can be used for various nefarious purposes <laughs> but yeah i just wanted to have like an extra little dungeon room that we could cage things up in when we need to anyway your name my dungeon master is going to be amachromium welcome to your new home <laughs> in the dungeon i'll try and come visit you every once in a while also i gotta get you like a, a, a lectern or something so you can have a job that's that's not where you go you don't you don't belong in the cage you're out here you're the the dungeon master <laughs> anyway oh hi you skipped me <laughs> let's bring our doggy in come on there you go welcome here now you have a roof over your head you don't have to sit outside while it rains again let me know your name suggestions for this little guy oh, i can't wait to get you some friends of different colors that's gonna be so fun but that's gonna be it for now thanks so much for tuning in i hope you really liked the dungeon build hopefully it gave you some inspiration and i'll see you in the next episode